Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. Tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place place hi i'm nina daisy Averline, creator of the lusty dragon mistress and you can find me on linktr.ee forward slash nina d Aberline, spelled a-b-e-r-l-e-i-n and you're watching and listening to two geeks talking Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. She has been on the show. This will be her third time. So she's in the Three Timers Club on Two Geeks Talking. The Five Timers Club, I guess, is the epitome of, of our collection of guests here, but I'm sure she'll be back on more than than that in the future as well too returning from across the pond and the creator of of course the new series the lusty dragon mistress we are joined by nina daisy aberlin how are you doing today i'm fine thank you kurt how are you doing doing good doing good it's great to have you back on because i believe and you mentioned this and i totally forgot about this you mentioned the lusty dragon mistress on your very first interview on the show i i can't believe it's been that long <laughs> Possibly. Um, it is something that I've been cooking the past few months because my other main comic, Sunrise Blossom, has been doing really, really well. Though also, I could tell my audience was a little bit more hungry. <laughs> that makes sense. So I was like, you know what? Times are hard. Porn pays. Yep. Let's see how it works. <laughs> but that's what I, I love about it is because sex sells, quite literally. It doesn't matter if it's in photography or comics or on a streaming service. <laughs> I, and I, there's various other comic creators I've known in the past, like Raven Perez, who does extremely well with that type of comics uh, as well, too, for 25 years for that matter. So I'm glad that you're, you're diving into a niche that is payable. <laughs> <laughs> First off. But also, it's, it's a fun story from what I got to read as well, too. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. And for those that haven't watched the other two interviews, please go back and watch them now. But for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person that you are, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to, to Geek Socket. So my name is Nina Daisy Averline. I am an Italian-Canadian comic artist, creator of Sunrise Blossom and The Lusty Dragon Mistress. And if you like girls kissing, then that's the content for you. We all like that. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this concept here, you touched on it when we first talked about it. You're doing this, obviously, not only for money, but for a creative expression as well, too. Okay. What is it about these two characters when you started drawing them together that just inspired you? Well, the thing is with the Lusty Dragon Mistress is that every issue is focused on two girls with the one constant being the Dragon Mistress. So the main synopsis of the comic is dragons normally collect or hoard gold, jewels, any precious kind of objects, but not Aurea, our main character. She collects wives. So every issue focuses on her collecting a new wife for her harem, her horde of wives. And the elf girl, whose name hasn't been revealed yet, is her very first wife. So it's like Henry VIII, but only with a dragon mistress. <laughs> yes, but it's a happy, oh, happy. polyamorous <laughs> lesbian harem. Your character designs have always been wonderful with Sunrise Blossom as well, too. I see you taking it to the next level with, of course, your dragon mistress here obviously as well too you know your colors have always been beautiful as well like you have a great complete package no matter what you draw and create. so i always love that yeah i'm really really happy with how the character design came out for uh this issue because both of them their designs aren't complicated but at the same time they're they've got recognizable silhouettes and i i feel it works i, I really like the way that their design has come out and also the way that their design uh, shifts mm -hmm. slowly though of course at the moment of recording this the first three episodes are out so there hasn't been much shifting in the character <laughs> design just yet but there is going to be an interesting shift as the first issue progresses 
you have this online as well too. You have a Patreon, and I definitely want to touch on those too. Where is it currently located? Because we have your link tree down below in your lower third, but I saw it on a website as well too. Uh, what's the website it's currently hosted on? Because most web comic uh, websites don't really allow adult content like tapas or or webtoons, the main platforms where the Lusty Dragon Mission can be read are Okida, which is a very rather new platform and it doesn't have a very big reader base at the moment but it has a really really nice uh, user interface it's like easy to use it looks pretty it's nice on your phone and it's one of those platforms where it's really satisfying to read on it could also be read on comic fury and pixiv so then talk about your your patreon as well you were trying out i believe in, in, uh, we last talked and it seems mm -hmm. to be doing extremely well i love seeing your your twitter feed and your and your social media posts just you know, saying that how excited you are about creating not only the commissions, but everything else like that. From a Thank business you. perspective, how has that been for you, both creatively and business-wise? It's been going really well, especially the past few months. When I was only doing Sunrise Blossom, it was like a gradual mm -hmm. growth, like bit by bit, like maybe every once in a blue moon, I get a new patron of someone who was like, hey, I really like your comic. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. But when I started releasing both the concept art uh, and as I started releasing the first few episodes, both on Patreon and later on publicly online, it was like a boom, almost. <laughs> like, like I woke up one morning and I had like 10 new patrons. I was like, what the heck? So it's been going really well. And I can proudly say that I currently make more on Patreon than I do uh, with my tank job, <laughs> which says a lot about uh, minimum wage and stuff in Italy. Well, that's great, though. I mean, you're taking your talent and you're making it into something that other people can also enjoy. And it gives you a challenge, I'm sure, as well, too, with the commissions that you've received. Is there anything that has been like an, oh, I haven't tried that before yet from an artistic perspective? Oh big time i have this one patron um because for the 15 dollars up tier i always normally offer monthly commissions uh through patreon and i have this one patron who's been asking me to work on like three animal gods or something like that from his D, &D campaign but in a kind of semi-realistic way and in a painterly fashion that is completely out of my comfort zone and it's like whenever i have to like a new month comes it's like oh gosh i have to work on this again <laughs> and it's like i have to study how to render water how to render fire how to do the the the, the back of uh, a turtle and it's like oh why must you push me out of my comfort zone like this? Is it more of like an oil painting style or is it more watercolor? Is something just... like that. So something that is not my quirky, cartoony style, pretty much. And it's like, why are you asking me to draw tigers and dragons? And all well, the dragons are fine, but... <laughs> Something different. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, hey, if, if the Lusty Dragon Mistress expands into other genres of creatures from different parts of your world, then the, at least you're set. Oh, yeah, definitely. So her first wife is the elf, which uh, we've gradually been seeing. And the next few ones, there's going to be Harpy. There's going to be a Naga, like a Lamia, a half woman, half snake lady. There's going to be a goblin. Uh, after that, I still have to think of next ones so go to a D, D character generation for mobs and just kind of figure yeah, it's out what like works. it's like random page of the D, D monster manual you might have to do a, a spin the wheel of of monsters for your uh, patrons as well too you know oh, like yeah this month it's insert creature here so there you go what else are you trying to do to promote yourself from a, a business perspective as well too because like you said now that patreon as of this month or this recording it's more than your job. How else are you trying to creatively reach your comfort zone, but also to get more business in as well too, to be supportive of your work? Well, I always have a very trial and error technique kind of when it comes to finding what works and what doesn't work in promotion. Something that so far has been working well for me Facebook groups, subreddits, and Discord servers, especially. So those have been helping a lot, especially because 
both with like Facebook groups, subreddits, and several Discord servers. You can find communities of people with a very niche interest. So it's easy to find the type of audience that might be into the content that I create. Do you have limits in terms of what you create in terms of the style of art? Well, I guess aside from what could be considered legal limits, like, you know, like children being no 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 or like animals like actual not furries like animals like no 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 but that aside i suppose that out of my comfort zone there might be things like gundams maybe some species of animals that i'm whose anatomy i'm not too familiar with but even then it's not something that i won't do Hmm. it's something that i'll groan and then begrudgingly do (laughs) What haven't you created yet that you want to create in terms of artistic uh, expression for yourself? Because you have a heterosexual wonderful- romance. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of heterosexual romance in my works, mostly because I suppose it's difficult to write male characters for me because I don't relate to them. Mm-hmm. I don't understand their their struggles. And if I were to create, like even in my own series, the male characters that I have are either based on like directly people that I know or various aspects of myself or sometimes just to satisfy um, personal fantasies <laughs> or something like that. One of my favorite characters in one of my comics is this big, tall Egyptian man with pecs and dreadlocks and he he has cat ears <laughs> but yeah that aside i don't know it comes more natural to create stories with women falling in love with women even though i am not a lesbian myself but it's just the book it just comes naturally that's the joy of being creative and having our own internal fantasies and the fact that you can take what's in your mind and put it onto page is a great way to relive slash showcase your talent as well too so that's always wonderful to see thank you you're doing multiple wives how many do you have planned is this going to be like one of those ongoing series where you're going to put it into like say a collection of something for maybe an upcoming kickstarter campaign or anything like that i do have an upcoming kickstarter campaign which i haven't started promoting yet because only the the first three episodes are out and it's like i don't want to jump the gun and start promoting too early i have the kickstarter link in my link tree it's like one of the first links aside from putting it there i haven't been promoting it and i'm already at like 39 followers on the pre-launch page i'm like where did these come from i'm going to have various issues. The first issue is actually almost halfway done. The first issue is 42 pages of which 30 are complete filth. Each issue is going to focus on a new wife, sometimes a more than one wife at the same time. And I have about four or five wives planned so far. But given the pace of doing maybe two issues, sometimes three issues of a comic a year, including Sunrise Blossom, I don't want to jump the gun too fast and start brainstorming things that aren't going to happen for another three years. Oh, um, there is one element that I would like to share about the Lusty Dragon Mistress and something that is going to be available on the Kickstarter, which is a fully dubbed version Mm -hmm. of the comic. So similar to how with Sunrise Blossom, I've got voice actresses to dub some scenes of the comic that I use for the trailer for the Kickstarter campaign. For this campaign, I'm going to have voice actresses dub not only the the trailer, but the full comic, naughty bits and all. (laughs) So aside from being able to like get physical copies of the comic or like the digital PDF version of the comic, there's also going to be a special video version. um, It's not like going to be like fully animated or anything. It's just like one panel to like shot shoot moving to, to the other with the voice actresses working on top of that so it's like it's going to be a a lot of work but I am looking forward to it and the auditions that I've been getting for it like I've already opened auditions and they're open until mid-April or so and they're they've been crazy so far like when I opened auditions for the voice actresses for Sunrise Blossom I got like maybe you 30 something submissions in total. With this one, I'm getting emails every day. Hey, this person auditioned. Hey, this person auditioned. This person auditioned. It's like, ah, this is so difficult. Why are there so many people auditioning? I wasn't even promoting the 
casting campaign much at all. While with the one that I did like last year for Sunrise Blossom, I was posting it on Twitter, Facebook, and like everywhere. And, and I got not that many submissions in comparison. And with this one, it's like, I, I'm not even promoting it. <laughs> and it's like, boom. So uh, I assume also because of the higher amount of people auditioning and it's going to also be better in quality. I'm glad to see how it'll come out. Well, I saw you had a male male role there. Actually, I was going to apply for that just to you know, even though it's a couple of lines. What what the heck? Why, yeah, why it's only like shot? like three lines. Oh, yeah, um, I can do that. Though at the same time, it's the role that I've been getting the most auditions for. <laughs> I was like, it's only three lines. <laughs> Calm down, because uh, also the the pay that I posted for the other two roles is something like fifty bucks, which is like it's it's not bad, but it's also like I, I did specify like how many hours uh, of work that it would take if all goes well in creating this. But like with the male one, it was only like, I think it was five or 10 bucks, not much at all. And it's like, I keep getting auditions. I was like, calm down, <laughs> it's pennies. Any role is a good role. You know, I think that's what it boils down to. And and if they are, enjoy the product, if they enjoy what you've already created, the fact that you have something already available for them to see, they can get in their headspace and mind space. And I'm sure as a director yourself, you're looking for the right types of voices, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you're trying something different than what you did with Sunrise Blossom. So you're not going to use the same actresses, obviously, for that. So I think... Yeah. One of the actresses that I hired for Sunrise Blossom, I asked... And she said she wasn't comfortable doing not safe for work work. So well, you have to have fun with it. You're trying something yeah. different and new and in motion comics, even if it's just going flipping panel to panel as the action is going in many cases, I'm sure it'll be going and going and going, but you know, I think it'll be wonderful in that case as well too, to, to showcase. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a wonderful campaign. Yeah. From what I've seen, you've done a great job with it and, and I'm sure it'll be a wonderful success as well. Fingers crossed. Since we last talked, uh, you've had multiple Kickstarter campaigns, and, and we had a wonderful conversation talking about the other issues of Sunrise Blossoms. How's the fulfillment been for that campaign? Because usually when you do campaigns, it's like back-to-back, -back, or it feels like it's back-to-back. -back. Well, the fulfillment for all the campaigns has been really well. Like As soon as the funds come in, I purchase the books, and as soon as they arrive, I, I ship them. So normally within a month and a half, the campaign ending, like people already receive the books. And though something ha funny happened, happened because with Sunrise Blossom Volume 4 campaign, which had a not safe for work variant. So one version was safe for children and everything. The other one had like a few extra pages with adult content. There was a small mix up at the printers. I received the books, the, the volume four books yesterday. Oh, wow. So and two of the books were fine. There was the Italian version and there was the safe for work version, but the not safe for work version wasn't there and I had accidentally received a box that was intended for someone else huh? meaning that that other company that was meant to receive the these this box of flyers that I received received my box of porn comics <laughs> so if I could just like see the face of the employee receiving the box seeing that on the side it didn't say the name of their flyers opening it and saying shirtless women <laughs> <laughs> been just precious but oh. luckily i've already contacted the printing company they're fixing everything and i'm getting my books early next week surprise <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's hilarious oh it's like another tuesday in some other company like oh yeah another box of flyers here we go uh, porn <laughs> well this day just got better okay <laughs> Yeah, and I even got jokes of some people saying that when they get my books back, they'll be sticky and stuff like that. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, just just make sure that the packages were resealed properly. I guess. I, I don't know. That's crazy. I can't believe that. <laughs> Well, Nina, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming back on the show. Well, thanks for having me. It was really lovely. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where's the pre-launch of the Kickstarter campaign and anything else you want to promote on the show? Well, luckily, you can find everything in my link tree. So all the uh, Kickstarters, uh, all the various links where you can find all of my comics, all my social media, it's all in that night packaged, nicely packaged, sweet little 
Linktree. And so, yeah, even my email, Twitter, Discord server. So even if you want to like pop in my server, um, become friends with me or some of my fans whom I love. Sometimes they're a bit much, but I love them very much. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. The website is being revamped at the moment. You can go to our YouTube channel, which has all of Nina's interviews, plus a thousand plus more on it, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. And of course, the podcast is back, which is on twogeekstalking.podbean.com or search any of your audio streaming services. And of course, you'll find it there by searching Two Geek Stalking. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geek Stalking.